Hello, this is Chris Duncan down in Lubbock, Texas, and I'm the founder of Find Your Focus Photographic Education. And today we're going to take a look at Nick Software's Color Effects Pro 4 for enhancing your landscape images. Nick Software, of course, the great innovator of plugins for Photoshop, Lightroom, and Adobe Aper and Ap Apple's Aperture. You can view them at nicksoftware.com. Download all of their applications for a free trial. And if you like what you see, you can purchase it and save 15% using promo code CJ Duncan. So here we have an image of Yosemite Falls from the valley floor of Yosemite National Park, where we host our Find Your Focus photographic retreat every year. And I'm just going to show you a quick and easy way to enhance this with Color Effects Pro 4. So we're going to go and open up Color Effects Pro 4 interface. And while it loads here, what I'm going to show you is our, uh, I'm not going to go into the interface and how it works or anything, just some ways that we can enhance our uh, landscape imagery. And I want to go to one of my favorite ones for landscape, and it's called the Detail Extractor. And it does exactly what it says it will do, and that's extract details. So there it is, that's just default, those are default settings. Over on the left, you see all of the filters. They have 55 filters with over 256 possible combinations. Actually, it's infinite now because you can make recipes and stack filters and stack them and stack them. And we're going to stack some here in this demo. But on the right are all my controls of the detail extractor. So I'm working over here. I'm going to bring this detail up quite a bit. And when you do, sometimes you run into this where it kind of compresses the tones a little bit and it looks a little flat. kind of gives that HDR effect. Well, to get rid of that flat look, we're just going to bring our contrast slider up. And it brings some of that depth back in there. So it kind of deepens our shadows a little bit. Okay, I'm liking that right there. And then I'm going to pop the saturation up just a little bit. Not much, just a hair. About right there. Now, I really like the look of this. I don't quite like it on the clouds. I like the clouds to be wispy as they're just floating across, not this hard kind of detailed cloud. So if you know anything about Nick Software, it's their U-Point technology that makes them so wonderful without complicated needs of mask and brushes or erasing. So here on control points, I can just take a minus control point and place it in the sky and you can see that that effect goes away. Now I'm going to duplicate it over here by holding the Option key and dragging that control point and I can just take it out of the sky. I'm going to make that effect just a little bit bigger. Right there. I think that's looking better already. One thing I want to do is I want to draw our eye more to that waterfall. Grass is a little bright down here. I want to pull our eye up. So one way we can do that is with light. I'm going to use one of my favorite go-to filters called the Darken Light and Center. What it is, it's kind of like a vignette. It's a little different than a vignette because it gives you ability to change the tonality of the center of your image, wherever that may be, and the outer edge of the image. So I'm going to bring that center, center luminosity up just a little bit and then back down that border luminosity. You can see the difference as I slide. It's subtle. It's very subtle, but it's there. And I'm going to place this center of interest right here on that waterfall. So let me click this before and after, turn that filter off. And look at the difference. It's subtle, but it's, but it's there. It's very impactful. So here's our before. And there's our after, just using Detail Extractor and a dark and light and center. And for my taste, I really like this image, and I'm going to leave it right there and go ahead and click OK. And, you can, and you'll be able to see the difference between the first two. It's going to create a new layer in Photoshop, so we could change blending modes, do a if we wanted to brush with the ability to brush parts out of that. So there's our before, and there's our after. I'm going to go to another image now, and you'll see me and show you some more neat ways to enhance your images with Color Effects Pro 4. So open that interface again and you'll notice it's going to load what we had last time, that detail extractor. That's just the way Color Effects works. It remembers your last settings and so there it is right there just where we had it. So if I was doing a series of images it's just really quick and fast. But on this one I want to show you another filter that's based off the film days and that's the graduated neutral density where we have a tonality shift now, not around the, not in a circular pattern like the dark and light and center, but in a linear pattern. And so, what we would do on this, if I didn't have a net graduated neutral density with me when I shot this to darken the sky, I can now add it digitally. Um, let's do that again. I'm out fault right there. So there we go. 
So it's already doing a big difference on the sky. You can see that the sky is a little bright. So I'm going to bring that upper tonality down and the lower tonality up. So now I've gotten a bright, brilliant blue sky. I've got more detail and contrast in half dome here. And just by using this graduated neutral density filter. And then I can change the vertical shift of it, how high it is. I think I wrote it right there. I can rotate it if I need to, left or right, but it needs to be up and down for this. And so I like that a lot right there. I think that's already, that's already looking nice. Okay, another thing I like to do is always add some contrast. And this time I'm going to click on the tonal contrast button. And I'm going to hold shift and it's going to add that filter. So I still have my graduated neutral density. Now I have my tonal contrast. Whoa, that looks kind of wicked. I think I want it before my graduated neutral density. So I can drag it here and just put it on top. And that'll change the way your image looks because now that neutral density is applied to tonal contrast, not my tonal contrast applied to that effect already, just like you would layer them in Photoshop. But what tonal contrast gives us the ability to do is just the contrast of different tones from highlight to shadow. So now I can bring down that contrast in the clouds and make them the wispy look I want by bringing them really low, or I can make them really structured and really HDR looking by bringing it up. And I like it right about zero. I don't want a much change in those clouds. I like that wispy cloud look. Midtone contrast I want to bring up and then I really want to bring up the shadow contrast and those trees. And then I'm going to take the saturation down. It's already a little too saturated for me. Okay. And I think over on the left it got a little too much on that mountain so I'm going to hit a minus control point. I can just bring a little bit off of it there. And then I can also do that with my graduated density filter, bring a little bit off of it there. All right. So this is looking good. Now I want to give this a nice moody feel. Kind of this, I don't know, just a sultry moody feel. So I'm going to click on the midnight filter. And default, it puts this deep glow on it. That's too much for my taste. But this blur, I'm going to bring this blur down about 11 percent. Contrast is good. Brightness bring up just a little. And the color is fine. Now one thing about ColorFX Pro is you see under control points we can expand that. Now we have an opacity slider for the whole filter. This is new to ColorFX Pro 4. I'm going to bring that opacity down a little bit. To about, about half. And then I want to minus a control point right on half dome here and expand that view and that's just going to kind of draw our eye into half dome. See that right there? And then I want to put another control point on the trees. Right there, let's see, let's make that a little. And then hold my option key to duplicate that. I still want it on the grass. But I just want to bring it onto these trees just a little bit. And it really creates a direction for our eye to look. Right here, these trees point up, brings me right to half dome. I don't want to get lost in the left or in this grass in front. So here's our before, there's our after. Before and after. So this is all using ColorFX Pro 4. Now, if you don't do landscape photography, it's great for portraits and weddings and commercial work. I think if you can only afford one NIC filter, this is the one to get. So anyway, here's our landscape images from Yosemite that uh, we just quickly enhanced using Nick's software's ColorFX Pro 4. From there to there, and then if you remember from here, from the beginning to there, bringing out that detail. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this quick little tutorial on how to enhance your landscape images using Nick's software's ColorFX Pro 4. So again, my name is Chris Duncan, the founder of Find Your Focus Photographic Education. We're at findyourfocus.org, and you can also check out Nick Software at nicksoftware.com. Download a free trial and save 15% using promo code CJ Duncan. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.